let's get started. Um, first slide is um, thank you to, the, to Pat Sauer and the rest of this conference and my colleagues. A year ago, I received a, a very prestigious award at this conference for, the, for my leadership uh, in the city of Coralville for stormwater management. Like every award, it's not just about me, far from me. I've got all sorts of great colleagues in the city. I've got a wife that, that certainly supported our efforts that we did at our home that you're gonna see a little bit about. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so um, hang on. Boy, you really gotta hang on now. Uh, gonna talk a little bit about our program in Coralville, uh, a little bit about our new stormwater uh, post-construction ordinance and highlights of a, of a paper project. No, he just had to turn it on. Okay, there. there we are. Now you can hear me more than you want to probably. Okay, um, let's, let's keep going here. A um, little bit about Coralville. Most of you probably know Coralville is right next to Iowa City. It's a very vibrant, economically growing, uh, both residential and commercial suburb, uh, about 20,000 population. Um, and uh, as far as within the, uh, the city, our stormwater program is within the Department of Engineering. Amy Foster is our stormwater coordinator. Uh, she would love to be here today, but she and her husband are soon to be expecting their first child uh, next month, and she thought it was cutting it just a little bit close. But uh, along with Amy are our, uh, Dan Holderness, who is in the audience, raise your hand, Dan. Um, our city engineer and Scott Larson, our assistant city engineer, who along with many other folks in the city make up our stormwater program. Um, our budget just for stormwater is about 482,000. That's for the fiscal year 16 that we just approved. Uh, how we pay for that is through a fee for uh, water connects. Anybody's got a water meter, business or household, it's, uh, it's been $2 a month. Now it's going up to $3 a month. And what does that uh, support? Uh, well, besides the stormwater programs that I'm going to talk about today, we also, uh, we were, you know, severely devastated by the 2008 floods. We had about $40 million worth of damage to our city, about 400 uh, residents lost and 200 businesses damaged. And since 2008, we've spent over $80 million on flood mitigation projects just in Coralville. And we're in the last stage of, of that project and we'll soon have our city completely protected. That's not the topic today. I could spend a, an hour talking about that. We're gonna talk about stormwater management, the much more uh, one and two and three inch rainfalls. But anyway, this stormwater program, we now have 10 pump stations as part of that mitigation program. And a big chunk is just the maintenance and repair of our stormwater infrastructure in the city. Um, uh, you know, you know we've, I'm very proud that we emphasize stormwater quality management and we try and send our staff to every uh, continuing education program, send them to other cities and communities to learn and, and try and bring back the best ideas. Um, also, uh, we fortunately have leadership in the city that walks the walk. I'm gonna talk a little bit about my project at the end of the presentation. City administrator just finished doing a soil restoration project last fall on, on his house. The fire chief loves rain gardens. We have two fire stations in Coralville. These two pictures uh, at the bottom are large rain gardens that the fire chief himself made uh, at each of the two fire stations. He got out this little bobcat and dug that out and uh, it's nice to have leadership in the city that, that supports it. We got started about 2003 with the, this facility. It's a, it's a parks pavilion, um, Northridge Pavilion, very easily visible from Interstate 80. This picture was taken in about 2003 after it was built. So the green roof was just getting established. It's much more, uh, uh, and engaged now. Um, in, in addition, there's a, uh, we experimented back in 2003 with permeable concrete. That's something we don't do much of at all anymore. We're going more the paver route. But um, you can see, uh, see me with my uh, skinny legs and short shorts. So you know that's, a, that's an old photo because my legs probably aren't that skinny and I certainly wear a little longer shorts now. But uh, <laughs> the, uh, that was my first year on the city council. Um, and it's just a picture of how the, the water is going down through the permeable concrete and just permeable concrete next to that. It's actually, for permeable concrete, that parking lot has stayed incredibly uh, in good shape. We've had very little maintenance with it. So we, we like it a lot, but it's just, um, we just think that pavers are, are, are a better route to go for a number of reasons. Um, another project, we've got a, a large wetland park that we built a few years ago behind the Marriott Hotel. It has an extensive boardwalk system, uh, oh, probably close to 
half mile, I'd say, of metal boardwalks. You can walk around the, the wetlands, and there's 32 informational signs along that boardwalk where people can stop and, and read something about how wetlands work and so forth. And it's extremely popular. Um, it's great for the Marriott uh, uh, clientele because at the end of the long day, they can go out and walk the wetlands and kind of clear their mind, or they can go out the front door and go to back, up, back pocket brewery and pollute their mind. But <laughs> so uh, we also in the process of building uh, on another uh, area of Coralville, some wetlands area, uh, we're building a boardwalk. We have a trail system that goes through where we can on, on grade, but there's areas where it's so wet that we got permission from uh, the Army Corps that rather than mitigate, we were able to put a, a boardwalk system in and that's going in as part of our trail system right now, be completed this summer. Um, there's projects all over our city that involve significant uh, stormwater uh, control projects. And, and this one is the Kirk Kirkwood Regional Center. It's a STEM school, uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Uh, it uh, will be opening up this fall, fall of 2015. Um, it's a large building with a lot of parking. And they've done bioretention bio cells and, and, and soil restoration and native turf and so forth. It's a, a great example of what's going on. Um, at the Iowa River Landing, that's what you see near the Marriott Hotel, right at the, the interchange with First Avenue. This is sort of the focal area of our public um, stormwater projects. We have, um, this is a, a swale runoff from a parking lot that goes into this swale here uh, and, and drains down. Um, this is a, a cell that we were building. It has several outlets from the street and the parking lot into the center area. There's a nine inch bee, uh, a beehive in the center of this, nine inches off the ground. Uh, hopefully the majority of the precipitation will settle down and precipitate into the soil. But if it's a real gusher and it gets above the nine inch depth, then it will go into the beehive and into the more traditional stormwater route. Oh, that's just the same area being built. Um, this is after it was built, after one of our rainfalls. It's, it's working the way it's, it's supposed to work. Um, I'd encourage you to, if you're driving down Interstate 80, pull in, look at the Wetlands Park, check out some of these projects that, that we have going on. Um, here's a, a tree cell, again in the Iowa River Landing. Uh, in the bottom of the photo is the street. We have water, stormwater runoff in the street into the tree cell, as well as the, you can see the sawtooth surround the outside, the runoff from the sidewalks, the pavers go into the tree cell as well. And that's working really well for us. Um, we've got 12 major projects just this summer in Coralville that involve a significant uh, stormwater management program. Um, that's, that's gonna be challenging because Amy Foster will be on maternity leave the majority of this summer. Um, but we think we've got it covered. Um, we've got a retired school principal um, who's very active in the community. He's a real advocate for, for doing things right in terms of uh, the environment. And so he's agreed to come out of retirement and work for us this summer doing our ongoing um, erosion control inspection. You know, we've got a lot of construction around the city and we require, we're very strict about uh, on-site erosion control. And Michael Leary, the principal, will be doing that for us this summer while Amy's gone. And I wanna give a shout out to Wayne Peterson and Amy Bowska um, from IDOLS, the, uh, both the Urban Conservation Program. Well, Amy's gone, those two have stepped up to the plate this summer and they're gonna assist with our plan review. Uh, uh, as plans come in, we're gonna make sure that the, the proper considerations are given to stormwater. And so it's, it's a team effort and we all get along well together and, it, and it's great that we can, we can make things, good things happen. Um, this is a project that's about two thirds finished right now. It's really exciting, it's state of the art. It's something that really hasn't been tried before in the state at least. This is um, uh, Coral Ridge Avenue is here. It's about uh, two thirds of a mile. It's about uh, a little over 3000 feet in length. It was a, a typical um, two lane um, a rural cross section road, shoulders and so forth, but it's become, it's right near the Coral Ridge Mall. It's become a main ar artery into our city. And so it's in the process of being turned into a four lane, more urban design standard. But the exciting thing is it's part of the, um, urb, uh, the Clear Creek watershed that, that, that the stormwater from this project will run off into. Rather than doing the conventional um, stormwater uh, you know, uh, pipes and so forth that would just channel the water off this roadway into the, uh, into the, into the Clear Creek eventually. We're doing on-site mitigation for this project. Uh, we have five bio, bio swales and uh, 
uh, two bioretention cells as part of this project with the goal of keeping 100% of the stormwater runoff on this four lane, almost two thirds of a mile length on site and treated and not running off into the ditches or any place else. Um, where the, where the right of way is wider on the south end, we have uh, swales and cells in the center of the roadway. As we get um, further to the north, um, uh, we're putting them on the shoulders of the highway and um, trying to treat that, get that salt treated before it reaches the creeks and infiltrates and so forth. And um, so as another part, not related to stormwater management, but an important part of this project is there's also, we build in a pedestrian and bicycle underpass. There's a, a large tunnel that's being built underneath all four lanes to allow safe crossing for pedestrians and bicyclists rather than going at grade and fighting the traffic at the traffic signal. So that'll be a, a great addition to our project as well. You can tell I'm going fast, sorry about this. Um, and our friends, um, the WERB, the Watershed Improvement Review Board, contributed $261,000 towards this demonstration project. And uh, researchers, I think um, Amy Bowska and others, uh, are gonna be doing research as this project proceeds to see how well it's working, since it's really first of its kind, see if these bioretention cells are designed properly in size and type and so forth. And we hope to really learn something from this and, and pass that on so we can try using something like these practices someplace else. Rockwell Collins gave us a, a, a nice contribution of $3,000 dollars as well their facility is right right near this roadway um, the um, n lake breaking news at our last council meeting on February 24th uh, the City Council approved uh, spending up to thirty thousand dollars to support uh, uh, watershed management authority WMA for the Clear Creek watershed um, this is uh, we're going to contract with the East Central Iowa Council of Governments easy cog to help form this authority it's going to be a cooperative agreement with the neighboring cities and conservation districts and, and other stakeholders in that area. Um, we, we just felt like that Clear Creek is a major waterway for our city. It flows, the confluence flows into the Iowa River in, in Corval. That was part of our flood mitigation issues that we had and we're working on. And we thought Clear Creek is a major waterway for our area. We're gonna just foot that $30,000 and get it done rather than going and asking the neighboring communities for can you contribute a couple thousand dollars, so forth and so on. Uh, that can take forever. We just decided at the council meeting, let's just pay for it ourselves and get it done. So we're gonna get the WMA for the Clear Creek Watershed established and then move on to hopefully some grant opportunities and so forth once we get a plan developed. Um, for that area. So that's, that's kind of exciting. I'm looking forward to being involved in that. Um, wanted to, I was asked to touch a little bit on our cost share reimbursement program. Very, very popular program um, that has supported re primarily residential, although some business uh, projects around, around the city. Um, the way it works is um, uh, we'll pay 50% of a, of a BMP up to a, a maximum of $2,000. And um, you know, we'll support all of the different types of uh, practices, rain gardens, uh, cells, swales, paver projects, trenches, you can read the list. Soil restoration, that's very popular, you know. There are so many, so many homes, unfortunately, now, hopefully this won't happen now that we have the post-construction stormwater ordinance, but in the past, so, so many homes were built where the topsoil was stripped and the sod came in at the end, went on top of that dense clay soil that we have in Johnson County, and it's no wonder the, the, the grass never does worth a hoot. And so there's a lot of soil rest restoration projects that are needed and we'll, we will fund those as well and get that infiltration going down rather than running off across that clay. Um, this is just a picture of one of the restoration projects. Um, the way it works is um, if, you're, if a resident is interested, they set up a meeting with Amy and they'll work with the city and a contractor if it's large enough that it needs a contractor to come up with a plan. You can submit an application. We just need a little drawing and so forth and make sure you know what you're doing and you're doing the right thing. And then you can get approval to start construction. Um, it's been very popular. Here are the numbers going back a few years. Back in fiscal year 12, it was just about $3,500. You can read the numbers. Every year, the interest by our residents has in increased. This year, by the end of uh, June, we'll, we will have uh, spent $25,000 in the cost share program, and the council voted to bump that up another $5,000 for the coming year. So um, very excited. You can see these projects all over the city of people wanting to get involved. Um, now I'm gonna lead up into a little bit on the stormwater ordinance itself. Uh, Coralville being the size it is next to Iowa City, we all are under the requirements of the MS4 program. Um, you know what the six controls are for that. Uh, most people in this audience, I'm not gonna 
take my time to go through those. Um, but why, why, why did we go ahead and, and um, create this post-construction ordinance? Well, the, the easy answer, but not the, for me the most important answer, is because we had to. Um, EPA, DNR requirements of MS4, you needed to come up with some type of plan to manage your, your stormwater. So that's, you could say that's a reason, but also, it's, it, it ultimately, it's going to save tax dollars, a lot of taxpayers a lot of money, going, uh, avoiding having to go back and retrofit um, the detention ponds that don't work, that plug up, that overflow, that s sediment in, um, these soil restoration issues. There's just a host of things that we're, we hope to preempt with our ordinance that will ultimately come back to save our community money as far as going, and having, going back and having to fix problems. And um, we get, you know, one of the most, the largest complaints, the most frequent complaints I receive is regarding stormwater runoff from neighbors up, up the hill. You know, and it's ended up in my backyard and so forth. So we are now requiring people to manage the stormwater on their own property. And bottom line, it's the right thing to do. And Corville really believes that from the, from the leadership on down. Um, the elements are water quality, water quantity management, soil management, using better site design principles, and uh, stream buffers uh, as necessary. Um, the, uh, the, 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 the gist of it is the ordinance that's passed uh, requires to infiltrate up to a one and a quarter inch rain event, infiltrate on site. Uh, for the larger 2.4 inch events, to infiltrate or at least manage on site. Um, and then uh, use the larger detention practices to manage the, the, the larger rain events that, that occasionally come. The last one was probably the most, the last bullet's probably the most controversial with the Home Builders Association. All, every bit of existing topsoil must be preserved and reapplied on the site in a uniform, non-compacted manner. And so you're not gonna get, you're not, you can't strip that topsoil and sell it or take it to another project. You've gotta leave it on site and you've gotta put it back where it came from. Um, it applies, as far as who it applies to, to any development disturbing more than one or more acre of land and or less than an acre if it creates an impervious sur surface uh, of over 5,000 square feet. So if it's got a big parking lot or a roof or something like that on a building. Um, no building grading or other permits will be granted. So you can't get a building permit till you've satisfied the requirements of our stormwater ordinance up front. Um, Pre-application meeting is required. You can't come in and get your building permit unless you've sat down with Amy Foster and the engineering staff to go over your stormwater requirements. So there's, there's no misunderstandings, hopefully. You will know, a uh, developer will know going in what he or she has to do to, to, to build in Coralville. And then uh, fees are set by separate resolution. Actually, right now, we don't have fees associated with it. We're, this first year, uh, we just implemented it last April, so we're a little less than a year old. We're seeing how much time it's taking the staff to, uh, to the, do these reviews, and we'll implement the fees accordingly. Um, uh, how we got through the process, Jay Michaels, uh, with the company for the late, the previous speaker works from up in Minnesota was our consultant, provided great leadership on it. Uh, right away we created an advisory committee, started meeting in the fall of 13. Um, we, we made sure we invited and, and insisted on attendance by some of the naysayers to, the, to, to ordinances like this, such as the Home Builders Association and others. But we, of course we also populated it with a lot of environmental advocates as well. Uh, we had open houses for the public that were very well attended, and we um, strategically organized it so we passed the final and third reading of the ordinance on Earth Day. We thought that was very appropriate, so we passed it on Earth Day in 2014. Um, okay. Well, two minutes. Okay, I think I can do this in two minutes. Okay, uh, my project close to my heart is the permeable paper project. Um, this is my home, my dog Muggles. Uh, she appears in a lot of photos because uh, we love our dog. Um, the previously, it's a circular driveway with had asphalt, railroad ties, very impervious, and it was falling apart. Um, we had super partners on this, my wife and I did. Amy Boska and Kate uh, Giannini uh, from Johnson County Soil and Water Conservation District were right there from the beginning. Of course, Amy from the city, and then my, our contractor was Culver's Lawn and Landscaping from Marion, Iowa. This was a tailgate talk that Amy and, and uh, Mike and I were having before the project started, how we were gonna go forward. Uh, so that's an aerial, aerial view, it's, you can see it's circular, it's got some parking off to the side and then the, the garage there. Um, 
One of the things that uh, Amy and Kate helped with right off the bat was getting soil borings taken uh, to see what kind of soil we were working with. The porosity of the soil determines, has a factor how deep that chamber needs to be made to, for underneath those permeable pavers. So they arranged to have them come in. They also um, arranged to have Mark Vitosh, the state DNR forester, come in and advise on the impact on adjoining trees on our property. And the, the sidelight of that, Mark became a good friend. He came back later in the spring when the snow was gone and we walked our entire timber and he gave me about a 12-page plan on how to better to manage the timber before, behind our home. Um, so the work began. Um, we, I, did a, I did a competitive bid solicitation, got about uh, half a dozen bids. We picked Culver's out of Marion. Uh, and the work began July that year. Uh, they, they excavated the old uh, asphalt and there's some concrete aprons up near the sidewalk. That was all, 100% of that was recycled, the asphalt and the old concrete. Then they dug a chamber, um, about a 20, roughly average about 24 inches deep chamber underneath this entire footprint. There's my dog at the front sidewalk wondering how do I, where do I go from here kind of thing. Um, the, next they line that chamber with a, uh, with a fabric to keep the soil from infiltrating the stone. Then they brought in and filled that chamber with stone. The first layer is about the size of your fist. The second layer was uh, more conventional, about uh, a quarter or half dollar size. And then the final layer was uh, much smaller that they could screed and, and set the final elevation for the pavers. Um, they compacted it, 95% compaction. Um, then the, the, the pallets of, of brick started to arrive, the pavers started to arrive, and then they started setting the pavers. They're individual um, L-shaped pavers, but they came on pallets and um, they were machine uh, loaded. And what that means is this gizmo here kind of looks like the lunar lander, I think. It, it grabs one whole uh, uh, plate off the top of the pile of pavers, one layer, and sets a layer down. Um, this guy here sets it, so it lines it up just right. And so the majority of the field was laid by this machine and it really went pretty fast. And then they hand laid all the rest. The, the, the craftsmanship was incredible. These radiuses that they did, uh, we used limestone edging as well. Um, I mean, it, I was just so impressed by the craftsmanship that these guys did with our project. And there's how it turned out. It, it really, uh, really was a beautiful project. Um, my, my dog likes it. Uh, uh, and uh, so, um, and in the winter, it performs just as well in the winter. That's the snow shovel and the, and the snow blower glides right across the top. There's no problem. All that snow melts at the least, least bit of warmth and disappears. Last thing of my slides is uh, the researchy part of it. I said I had one, one uh, slide like that. Uh, we have a monitoring well. That's, oops. That's what, um, this is a, a well that just goes straight down to the bottom so you can measure the depth of water in that rock chamber after, after rains. It's also the emergency overflow. That's like the overflow in your bathtub. If the water goes up as high and it can't go any higher, it goes into this collection system, goes out the back stream. Ideally, you never want that water to come out of there. You want it to be deep enough that it will handle the, the large rainfalls. So we put with that monitoring well with um, Dr. Mary Skopek uh, from DNR, Dr. Art Bettis, the University of Iowa, and this is Amy Foster. In that monitoring well, he put a, a, a gizmo, there it is hidden underneath these two stones. He takes that off, there's a monitoring well. He drops, um, he drops his gizmos down and it records the depth of water in that chamber 24 seven over the entire summer to see how much water after rain events, how deep it gets. And here is the one graph, this is pretty cool. This is from May of last summer through October of last summer. We had three major events. These are the peaks and the depth of the water in the chamber. Um, the highest peak was after a two, uh, almost three inch rainfall on June 30th. That entire week we had almost six inches of rain in Coralville that week. The monitoring well at its highest point was 67% full. That's great, that it only was two thirds full after rain events of that size. And you can see four, four, to four inches in July and another four inches uh, uh, over a couple days in September. It never got higher than about two thirds full in that chamber, so it was well designed. Um, the, um, I just wanna, oh, there's just another research project that Amy's talked to me about, Amy Bowska, about uh, we're gonna uh, ask me to start taking, uh, collecting water samples out of that monitoring well. We're gonna send it to the state hygienic lab and, and start um, testing for these other products in there. Uh, uh, other chemicals and so forth that's in that in that water in that chamber, and, and this is this is the the 
I'd encourage you, if you have any questions, go to this website, Corville.org. A copy of the Stormwater Ordinance, very easy to read, is on there. There's also the the city of Corville produced a a five-minute and a 30-minute version video of my project showing before, after, during construction. The the link to the YouTube video is on the website if you're interested in that Permville Paver project. Thank you. (laughs) That was good.